Hey everyone, the new Inside Out movie is out. This guy has been a little bit slow on the ball when it comes to reviewing stuff. Uh, I mean, he I know he has a baby, but you know what? He, he really gotta get these videos out, so I want everybody to be on it, okay? As soon as this movie comes out, we are gonna review this thing, got it? Yeah! Totally. I am on it. Well! How's it going? I am Lazy Dude. Welcome to another Lazy Dude video. Sorry, I've been a little bit behind the ball with a lot of videos. Uh, I mean, I, I have a baby. She's uh, 10 months old now. Boy, it's been like this whole year has been going by in slow motion. I looked at my videos and I have not did a lot of video this year. And it's, I'm going to blame it all on Ellie because it's mostly all her fault. But you know what? Let's get back into a rhythm. I actually got a lot of videos uh, filmed in, uh, let's just say I'm doing another ranked video series. So uh, I'm not done with it yet. I'm not done recording it. But uh, about halfway through the film series and I won't tell you what it is. But anyway. Let's get on to it. Inside Out 2. You know, when I first heard that they were doing a sequel to this, I was excited because there's a lot of potential to go into different areas of the brain and of your emotions, and that was a really interesting world that they created, and I was excited to go back there. But I also was a little leery because it's like, is this just sequel bait? Are we actually trying to make something here? Are we just, you know, trying to get out the money because that film was successful? Well, I don't know how overly successful it was. It wasn't like a Toy Story or anything. But anyway, case I was really satisfied with this movie. Inside Out 2, of course, if you haven't seen it or haven't heard the premise, if Riley is growing up and she is starting to become more and more emotional because she's getting new emotions and because of that she's starting to feel everything a little bit more in the extremes as puberty has fully taken over. Her personality has now developed into her sense of self, this little device that is really shaping who she is and how she views herself as a person, but then along comes all these new emotions, and they throw a little wrench in everything, and now some of them think that Riley deserves this way, some people want to do things the old-fashioned way, and of course, lessons are learned along the way. Now, the thing that I'll say about this, and I'm going to start negative, but I want to say that this review is going to be mostly positive, but I want to start negative. The one thing that I will say that this movie has, is a bit of the negative, is there's a lot of kind of retread. Not in the fact that we're doing the exact same thing exactly, but Joy and these other characters are lost in the brain just like they were in the last film. They have to find a way to fix something in headquarters just like they did in the last film. The only difference is is more of an antagonist in ter well, Joy was kind of the antagonist in the last film, but uh, there's more of an antagonistic force in the new emotions being uh, anxiety, ennui, meaning boredom, not caring, and whatnot, or, uh, embarrassment, and envy. You know, they uh, kind of push the other emotions out because they feel like their way of doing things isn't helping Riley. But, but for the most part, it still is you're going on a journey and you have to learn something about yourselves and, and you know what, that's, uh, it ends in a way that is like, oh, well, our real mission wasn't this, it was this. And that is kind of just done again, you know? In a lot of ways, it's just done the same thing again. Your objective in the film, you know, isn't exactly what's going to end up happening at the end. Where in the last film, they wanted to return everything to the way it was normal, and they realized that sadness is an integral part of growing up and learning to have emotional balance. And, you know, that's that was the premise of the last film. This film, it's, it's all about your sense of self shaping who you are. And I do like the way it is handled. Because at first you think it's a lot of anxiety's fault. You know, anxiety, this new emotion comes up and it feels like it knows how to handle things better than everybody else. And so it pushes the other emotions out and they're like, no, you need everybody, you know, sort of thing. And 
It's one of those things where this movie is one of those films that keeps on getting you thinking. But I like that it gets you thinking of new things. And I like how it takes certain elements. Like, for example, Imagination Land was just a whimsical childlike land in the last film. Here, it's being used by anxiety to foster more anxiety-filled scenarios. I love that, because what does it say about ourselves? That our own minds, when we are letting anxiety take control and be the lead in our lives... Our own minds are turning against us with our own imagination. Our own imagination and our own thoughts are being used against us. And that is just such a brilliant way to uh, put that in this movie. And you know what? There's a lot of just things I want to talk about. So I'm actually going to, since I'm a little late on this, I'm going to do most of this as a spoiler. I want to say that, uh, just for a generalization, I think this is a very solid movie. I don't think I would rate it higher than the last film, but I'm going to be giving it a very solid 8 out of 10. I think this is one of Pixar's best in recent days. I'm trying to think what they did last. Like, uh, Luca was really good, but I, I don't think I would put it uh, on the same level as this. I feel like this... It doesn't reach the same thing because it's not as new, you know? It still has to redo the same sort of thing. It still has to go down the same road that the first movie plowed. So I think the first movie is better. But I feel like this movie asks just as important questions in interesting ways. And so I, I definitely am going to give it an 8 out of 10. So yeah, spoiler. Um, what I really love about this movie is that... Joy is like, oh, anxiety is messing Riley up by only choosing these anxiety things. She's destroying Riley's true sense of self. But what Joy doesn't realize is that that's exactly what Joy was doing. Joy only viewed positive moments in Riley's life as moments worth helping her shape her mind. Where all of our memories, all of these moments that are good and bad, help shape us to who we are. We are not just one thing. You know, people aren't just, I'm a good person, I'm a bad person. I, you know, there are, they're more than that. And I think that that is a really good lesson to be like, you're not just one thing. You are a complex individual filled with so many different emotions and you need to be the one in control of them. You need to not let your emotions control you. You. There's a moment at the end of the film where Joy lights up and she feels herself drawn towards the console and Sadness says, Riley wants you. And I love that because it shows that Riley is growing up and being coming more in control of her emotions. Because let me say this, like the, 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 so the premise of the, movie, of the series is that you can put an idea in, but Riley is the one that has to take it. You know, you put the idea in the slot and then it holds, and if it holds, then Riley has taken the idea and run with it. Where it felt like almost every single idea, good or bad, that they would put in the slot, Riley would take, you know? Let's run away back to Minnesota. She takes that idea, you know? It's like any little thing she would take. And now I don't think her character would because I feel like she is now the one in control of her emotion and she's not letting her emotions control her. You know, that little moment of, of uh, Joy lighting up and being called to the console, that is symbolic of Riley being the one to control the emotions now. They're not just giving Riley the orders, they're following her lead. And I think that is such a beautiful way to show just growth as a human being. Now, let's not even just get all into the hyperbolicness of the symbolism and everything. Let's just talk about how funny this movie is, because it is very funny. There's lots of great moments. There's a moment where Riley is just walking, and then she's overanalyzing her walk. He's like, am I swaying in my arms too much? I right, put them still. No, now you look like a psychotic person. Okay, we'll try to copy that person. No, we can't pull that off. And it's just like, it's really good, really funny. My wife and I, we saw this in theaters, and there was one moment, I can't remember which moment it was, but she turned to me and she said, as a, someone who was a teenage girl at one point, this is 100% accurate. And I'm just like, what better recommendation do you need, you know? Um, I will say that the movie doesn't really uh, go into detail of why... Like, these other emotions never appeared in the heads of the parents before. You know, like, they, they do in this one for, like, one quick scene where, like, the other emotions that we were introduced to in this film come out. But they don't really show why they weren't there in the last film. And I didn't really necessarily think they would. It's just one of those things where they never actually got to it because, you know, they never... Um, 
well, they never got to it. They never, you know, they didn't know that that's where they were taking this franchise, and so obviously this is a small thing. That's not even a main. I can't even critique it because you didn't know the future and what stories you were going to tell. Um, I like that we get a lot more of the other characters, like disgust, anger, and fear. They all have a lot more fun moments. I like them working in the main plot. In the last film, they felt like they were just there in the control room messing things up. It didn't feel like they were actually relevant to the ongoing plot other than these people are messing things up. I like there's a moment where Disgust uses like CSI technologies like, oh, there was a look. She gave a look. What is that about? It's like, what? I didn't notice any changes. Like, no. It uses this like high-tech thing and then we jump into the other friend's brains and stuff. And I also like some of the details about how this is a point in Riley's life where her friend life is actually way more important to her than her parents parent life like family island is there but it's smaller and i like how the, the movie doesn't say that that's a bad thing it doesn't say like oh she needs to connect with her parents more it's not like she doesn't have that connection to her it's just at this point in your life in your teen progressing years you are starting to move out on your own and make your own decisions and make your own mistakes and because of that i think your friends are a lot bigger part of your life for a lot of people not everybody but for her it's like this is more my identity and everything and I think that that's pretty cool with that um I, I will say that since this movie is uh, it, you know it's a sequel there's not as much new stuff about Riley's brain you know in the last film we went to dreamland we went to the subconscious we went to uh, you know, uh, abstract thought. There's not a whole lot of that. There's like one place where you, you're Riley's deepest, darkest secrets. And that place is actually pretty funny because there's like this cartoon character that is for a cartoon show that is way too uh, young for her age and the dark secrets that she actually still loves the show. And as somebody who I grew up with like two channels, I definitely watched some children's shows that were much younger for an age group that wasn't my current age group, but I just didn't, I wanted to watch something and that was the only thing that was on, so I just did. And so I could relate. There was a few shows that I was like, you know what, these aren't that bad, you know, <laughs> but uh, I can relate to that, sort of having that sort of deep, dark secret, and that's your secret, is that you like the children's show. I like the way that <laughs> Riley is handled in here. Uh, I will say that, like, <laughs> they're like, oh, will Riley be able to join the hockey club next year? I'm like, with the way she's scoring goals, like, you might as well call her Riley McDavid. I mean, that's what basically her goal scoring ability is out of this world. She would be, I mean, not drafted or anything like that, but she would definitely be on the team if you're scoring like this. My goodness. But I, I just like how this is a per child that's putting so much pressure on themselves, a large part of the anxiety. But, you know, if you don't look at it that way, if you don't look at the emotions, this is just a child, a teenager, that is putting so much pressure on themselves that it is damaging their relationships with their friends and is damaging just who they are as a person and damaging their self-worth. Oh, man, you just get so existential with this film. And then you go like, oh, yeah, there's also a bunch of fun little silly moments as well. Absolutely. You know, it's it's just, it's uh, there's fun callbacks. There's just good moments overall. I just, I really enjoy this film. I feel like sadness is a little sidelined in this one. I feel, you know, like in the, in the first movie, Joy tries to draw a circle around her and say, stay in the circle. This one, she kind of almost does. Not that she doesn't have any good moments or stuff. There's still stuff for her to do. I feel just like anger and disgust and fear were in the main relevant plot more, where she was just kind of like pushed off to the side for a little bit. Uh, but I do like what anxiety sort of thing is in her deal of her being the person to stop the possible threats and how when you let them... There's nothing wrong with looking ahead and seeing your plans and seeing what could go wrong. But when you let that define your entire life and your entire livelihood and every single day and every single moment of what could go wrong, you end up just wrecking who you are as a person because... We live in a world filled with trouble. Everything can go wrong. And, you know, if you're looking at every possible scenario, you're just going to run yourself ragged and destroy yourself. 
And that is what she almost does in this. And I like how when she thinks that she's building something good, that she's building a Riley that's impervious to anything, and when her flower blooms and her self-worth comes in and who she thinks of herself, her thoughts that she's saying is, I'm not good enough. And that's because that is what has been instilled in her. Is like, you're not good enough. You need to try harder. You're What you are now is not good enough. And yeah, just I really like that sort of simplistic storytelling. Uh, so yeah, I, I just think that Inside Out 2 was a really great movie. I'm getting all existential on you know, right now, so you know that I really enjoyed it. I'm giving it an 8. I, I don't know if I ever reviewed the original Inside Out. If I did, I think I'd give it like somewhere between like a 9, maybe even a 10. Well, I have to, I'd have to check to see an anime and look back one of these days. But yeah, I just... I enjoyed all the characters, I found them all relatable, I found them all good, and I like the lesson that Joy has to learn again, but in this one it's not just like every emotion is needed, it's that every part of you is who you are. You can't just pick it. But I liked it that that's what you do is when you're a kid, you're just like, oh, I'm a nice person because I did this, this, and this. You pick out the good stuff of who you are and that, that define you. And when you get older, you realize who you are as a whole, or at least hopefully you do. Some people don't. Some people only look at, and I like that because you can take your mind and think those people that only, those joys or whatever that only picked out the good moments in life and only let that define who they are, those people never see anything wrong with themselves. Those are the people who every problem is somebody else's problem because it can't be me because I'm Mr. Perfect. Nothing's wrong with me. And uh, just, yeah, this movie just gets you thinking. I love movies that make you think like this. So, uh, yeah, put in the comments below what was your favorite part of Inside Out 2. I thought it was a really good movie, very strong movie, one of Pixar's best in recent days. And, uh... I, I'm, not, I'm not looking forward to Toy Story 5 or whatever they're doing. Zootopia 2? I mean, I, that's not Pixar, but I'm interested to see what they could do with it. But uh, as far as for this movie, I thought it was very, very solid. Very, very fun. And yeah, that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching. I really do. Bye. Be sure to check out some of these other videos on my channel. And wait for more coming soon.